Hey, welcome back. I'm Sid. If there is any dialogue box in Photoshop that can be so easy yet confusing at the same time, then it has to be the image size options dialogue box. And this is absolutely not Photoshop's fault. But firstly, because image resolution doesn't have a fixed definition and is often mistaken for image quality. And secondly, to add to the confusion, we have ancient statements such as 72 dpi is the highest resolution to upload to the internet that reduces file size while giving the best quality. Sounds familiar, right? Well, this video aims to clear up any confusion around image resolution and in the end show you the best way to resize and optimize your image for the internet or high quality prints. But first, let's see where the myth of 72 dpi comes from. So, in the early 1980s, some Apple computer screens did in fact have resolutions of 72 dpi. This was so that they could render fonts correctly on those old 9 inch monitors and also to ensure compatibility with those dot matrix printers printing at 144 dpi. And the reason the monitor had to be around half the dpi of the printer was so that what they saw on screen would match the quality and proportion of the print on paper. Now, before we proceed, let's get some terms correct. dpi is probably the most familiar and most misused measure of resolution. In printing, DPI stands for dots per inch, that is, the dots of ink used by a printer to fill up an inch of a paper. For computer screens, we have PPI which stands for pixels per inch. These pixels that we see on screen are later converted by the printer's software into printable ink dots. So technically, when we refer to a monitor's resolution, we should say pixels per inch or PPI and not DPI because there are no ink dots in the monitor, right? And over the years, our display screens and printers have improved tremendously, making the 72 dpi rule, or rather 72 ppi, become completely irrelevant. Apple's retina displays have a resolution of around 300 ppi, and some smartphones now display up to 500 ppi. I'm going to explain this further, but first, let's try and understand image resolution. Everyone is quite familiar with the term resolution, right? You hear it all the time, in the form of lens resolution or camera resolution, Right now, when we were talking about the screen resolution in PPI or pixels per inch and print resolution in DPI, we were not talking about the image resolution at all. And this is very important to understand. Resolution quantifies how close pixels, dots or lines can be to each other within a physical area and still be visibly resolved. So the most important part of this sentence to really understand resolution is physical area. A paper has a physical area that you can hold and measure in inches. Your flat screen monitor has a physical area. And so does the camera sensor which captures the image. The fact is, a digital image itself has no inherent resolution at all, as it has no physical size. It's just a certain number of pixels as width and certain number of pixels as height together forming the pixel dimensions of the image. For example, any digital image with the same pixel dimensions can look 40 inches big on a 40 inch TV or 6 inches small on a smartphone, right? So pixel dimension is the only attribute that can determine the so called resolution of a digital image. And that brings us to this unspecified resolution option in Photoshop's image size dialog box. While it might confuse everyone as image resolution, simply read across the line and you will know what this resolution stands for this amount of pixels per inch. Whatever you set here will be the pixel density which will be converted to dots and contribute to the print resolution. So 72 pixels per inch talks about pixel density which is converted to dots per inch for printing. It has absolutely nothing to do with the internet. So when you see this resolution in dots per inches or pixel per inches, immediately think of it as print resolution. It does not affect your raster digital image resolution. Pixel dimension that you see here on the top is the only attribute that determines the resolution of digital images and even videos. Now if you're thinking, video resolutions are in full HD or 4K and my camera produces image resolutions in megapixels. And you're absolutely right about that. Let me bring it all together. A 1080p video, also marketed as full HD, has pixel dimensions of 1920 by 1080 pixels. And what happens when you actually multiply these pixel dimensions? You get the total number of pixels in millions, also known as megapixels. So, a 1080p image is equivalent to 2.1 megapixels, which means it has more than 2 million individual pixels. 
Similarly, 4K refers to one of these two pixel dimensions and totals to around 8.5 megapixels. Now, the pixel dimensions from a 24 megapixel camera is around 6000 by 4000 pixels. And if you multiply them, you get a total of 24 million pixels or 24 megapixels. So beyond all the marketing terms to represent pixel dimensions, they are all related to each other by a simple multiplication. Now that we have established that pixel dimensions or megapixels are the only attribute that determines the resolution of digital images, let's see how to optimize and resize images in Photoshop. There are quite a few ways to resize your images in Photoshop, for example during export or while cropping. But we are going to focus on the main image resize options which can be found in image, image size. Now before you do this, it is a good idea to duplicate the original image document and then resize so your original image is unharmed. And you can also use the shortcut Ctrl Alt I or Command Option I to access the image size dialog box. So on the left side you can see the preview and you can make this window bigger by dragging the bottom right corner. On the right side are all the parameters with which you can upscale or downsize your image for both internet or print. As I've already said before, the pixel dimensions on the top is the most important attribute and shows the original size of the image as it came out of your camera. These are the actual pixels that you zoom into at 100% like you see in the preview. And if you go to the dimensions drop down, you can also choose any of these options like percentage. But I would highly recommend you stick with pixels. Because once you master the trick of thinking in pixels, nothing can confuse you. Next, make sure this link is always activated to maintain the aspect ratio, otherwise the image could get squeezed or stretched. And if you're resizing the image for the web, the correct unit of measurement is pixels. And for printing, you can choose either inches, centimeters or whatever the print size needs to be. Now, the resample option is very important. It lets Photoshop decide how to resize your image. When you uncheck resample, you will first of all see that the link is extended to resolution as well. So resolution and image dimension are all linked together. And secondly, if you notice, the dimension parameters immediately change from pixels to centimeters. And the pixel dimensions are now inactive and locked, meaning the original pixel dimensions will be maintained. So basically, the resizing will happen in the form of the size of each pixel by reallocating these existing pixels in relation to the print dimension and print resolution. So. If I change the print resolution from 300 pixels per inch to 100, the pixels will be regrouped in groups of 100 larger pixels per inch of paper instead of groups of 300 smaller pixels per inch. And of course the print dimension will be affected as they are all linked and have to finally add up to the same number of existing pixels. And Photoshop automatically calculates what will be the print size when you change it. And it is a very simple math, have a look. If you have 100 pixels per inch resolution, Simply divide 100 with the pixel dimensions and what you get is the amount in inches. So if we divide 6000 by 4000 pixels by 100, we will get a 60 by 40 inches print on paper. And while this will give us a large print, the image would be pixelated. This is because when you reduce the amount of pixels per inch, the pixel needs to get bigger to fill that inch of the paper, right? And this would make us see those square pixels. Now on the other hand, if you choose 300 pixels per inch, your printer will pack all those pixels inside 1 inch, so the printing will be fine as you can't distinguish those pixels. But since a lot more pixels will be crammed in a small area, your image will be printed considerably smaller compared to if you choose 100 pixels per inch print resolution. And as you can see in the preview window, the original image size is not changing at all regardless of what PPI setting you use. It is the exact same pixel dimensions and the same quality. Once again this just shows us that the resolution setting only matters for print. So how many pixels do you need for a sharp print? Typically the print resolution of 300 pixels per inch is the industry standard for high quality printing of photographic images. 150 can be acceptable, but 100 or 72 ppi is barely adequate and will produce pixelated results. The best practice would be to check with your printing lab and then add that specific parameter here while resizing. And if you're unsure what to put here, I would recommend to keep it at 300 ppi at all times because on the internet it won't make any difference and while printing, you always have high quality and at any time you can choose a draft quality setting in the printer even if the image has a high 300 ppi resolution. So 300 ppi is the new standard and 72 dpi is completely outdated. Now 
What if your original image at 300 ppi print resolution gives 20 by 13.3 inches, but you want a 25 inch wide print at the same 300 ppi resolution setting? This will require resampling, that is, adding pixels to upscale or discarding pixels to downscale your image. Always keep an eye on the megabytes of the file size. If they change, that means the image has been resampled. And you can see what the file size was after making the change. If the size increases, pixels are added. And if it reduces, pixels are discarded. But keep in mind, with resample on, if you try increasing the print resolution, many assume the image resolution increases because the file size gets bigger. But in reality, this high resolution does not equal to high quality. Because the camera didn't capture all these extra pixels, they are artificially added by Photoshop. So the quality in fact decreases when you upscale the image. So you should ideally increase it by 20 or 30% if required, not more than that. And these pixels are added using Photoshop's artificial intelligence. And the best setting to upscale your image is using the new Preserve Details 2 option. Now let me reset this. And by the way, in Photoshop, you can hold Alt or Option key to get the reset button instead of cancel. Or you can also go to the preset and choose original. So now, when it comes to web images, with the resample unchecked, this entire options is completely useless. Because as you can see in the preview, nothing really happens to the actual pixel dimensions. They are all locked. And the print resolution and dimension do not affect the actual pixels to be displayed on the internet. So, when you resize for the web, you have to make sure resample is checked. Now let's set it back to pixels. And when you reduce the size now, the original pixel dimension shrinks as you can see in the preview window and on the top here. So Photoshop has to discard some pixels out to make it fit in the smaller size. And the best option I would recommend for downsizing images is by Cubic Sharper. But you can experiment with others. I find even the new Preserve Details 2 option does a fairly good job with reductions. Now, image optimization for web happens in two stages. First of course is the size or pixel dimension that we just set in this image size. The second one is image compression. Just like image size, the quality of the image can also be manipulated. So once you decide the image size and dimensions, you can compress the image further to reduce the file size. And this takes place when you save or export this image as a JPEG file. So if you go to file, save as, and select JPEG as the file format type for the image, just enter the name and click save. And you'll be presented with a choice of image quality options and format options. Now, for quality settings, the trick is to lower the compression quality of the image until the artifacts are noticeable. You might want to zoom in your image and make sure this preview is on. And then, increase the quality until the image looks sharp for the web. The quality setting between 8 to 10 will not only lower the file size, but it will keep your images looking virtually the same as maximum quality at 12. And for format options, I recommend the baseline standard, which is compatible and recognized by all web browsers. The only downside is that it displays the image only when it's fully downloaded. But with today's high-speed internet, that shouldn't be a problem anymore. The baseline optimize option further optimizes the color quality of the image to reduce the file size. But this setting may not be supported by all web browsers. And finally, the progressive scanning option downloads your image in either 3 to 5 steps, first as a low resolution image, allowing it to be viewed instantly before it's completely downloaded. And then with each scan, the image quality improves. So this is an outdated technology that played a large role during the dial-up internet days and is hardly useful with today's high-speed connections. So I hope all of this information helped and if you hear someone vaguely using the term image resolution, what they are probably trying to imply is the resolution of the image when printed on paper or displayed on screen or captured by a camera sensor. So please share this video with everyone around you and if you're new here, subscribe and ring the bell to be notified for the next one. Thank you for watching.